It's Sunday, the 8th of August. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and the loss of Dale Snodgrass is keeping a lot of us up at night. There's one more thing we need to consider, investigators need to consider, especially after talking with some of the owners of this unique Cy Marchetti 1019 aircraft. One of the possibilities we've been discussing, and by the looks of the accident, it appears as if the controls may have been locked. But after speaking with owners of these aircraft, this control lock system is virtually impossible to taxi the aircraft with the control lock engaged. This control lock, this red bar down here, right, raises up and grabs the control stick with a, a L-shaped hook on the backside of this control stick, locking the ailerons in the elevator. Not only does it lock the ailerons in the elevator, but the other end of this bar also grabs both rudder pedals, locking the rudder pedals, preventing any of the control surfaces from getting banged around in the wind. With that control lock in place, flying this aircraft from the front seat, even from the rear seat, it would be virtually impossible to taxi the aircraft because you need the rudders to taxi the aircraft. So that may very well rule out the possibility of this particular control lock being a factor in this accident. Regarding the possibility of the front seat coming loose in the rails and sliding backwards, well, in this particular design, the front seat has very little movement. As you can see, just one notch, just a couple inches of movement on this front seat. Besides, if we look at the rear seat, if we look at the rear seat installation, this particular Cy Marchetti had a rear instrument panel. Here's the front seat. It's going to rest right up against the rear instrument panel if in the event that front seat came loose. So in other words, that front seat is not going to move very far even if it did come loose from its tracks. Regarding wrapping the flight controls around the stick with the seat belt here in the rear seat, this seat belt is attached way down here by the rear door frame and I do not believe and owners do not believe that this rear seat belt is even long enough to grab a hold of the seat without some sort of an extension. So what investigators are going to be needing to look at very closely is the elevator trim system. The elevator trim system on the Cy Marchetti is electric. The Cy Marchetti has this very powerful turboprop engine and needs a very powerful elevator trim system to counteract the power of that engine and its ability to lift the aircraft, to climb the aircraft. This is the elevator trim, electric trim switch right here on the stick. There's a lot of things going on in this stick, including the push to talk uh, for the microphone for the uh, radio itself. But this, we call it a coolie hat style switch in order to actuate nose down trim, you push that stick, that coolie hat switch forward. In order to actuate nose up trim, you pull that switch down. If in the event that this trim was rigged backwards, that could explain absolutely everything in this crash. As, as you saw how quick things unfolded in, in, this, in the actual crash sequence, if Dale was trying to achieve nose down trim and pushing that switch forward and instead receiving nose up trim, that would explain the, the consistent rise of the nose in this accident sequence. And after speaking with owners of the Cy Marchetti aircraft, they say that this, well, one owner in particular had this in fact happen to him. And the only way he was able to recover was by applying opposite trim and recovering the aircraft, which as you saw in this accident sequence, how fast things unfolded, it would take an, an extraordinary, well, extraordinary thought process, extraordinary reaction, extraordinarily opposite of everything you've ever learned to think about pulling the trim the opposite direction if in the event it was mistrimmed. And this is not the first time this year that we've had a major accident due to a misrigged elevator trim. A trim system that was rigged 
in the wrong direction. So investigators are already looking at, I'm sure, what's the recent maintenance history of this aircraft? Did it just come out of annual inspection? And were they working on the elevator trim system? Let's go look at the elevator itself. Here it is. Here's the elevator trim electrically drives these two trim tabs at the trailing edge of the elevator. This aircraft has two trim tabs indicating to me what a strong elevator trim system this aircraft needs to counteract the, the lifting, the potential lifting force or the change in center of pressure, if you will, with the power changes of this very powerful engine. And if this trim was in the full nose up position, it may very well have overpowered the pilot. Another problem that can occur with these electric pitch trim systems is runaway trim. A simple short, even in the wiring right here in the stick behind this switch can cause the trim to run away full deflection one way or the other. If this was the case here, potentially the trim could have been running away to the full nose up position, even as the pilot's trying to counteract it with full nose down trim. That's what this red guarded switch is here on the stick. I believe that's gonna be your emergency trim disconnect switch, this red guarded switch at the top of the stick where Dale may have been fumbling around trying to get that switch turned off to stop a runaway trim situation. And in the process of fumbling around, he's also grabbing the push to talk switch, which is where you hear those last two expletives from Dale. Now, most light aircraft are certified such that even with the trim all the way full up or full down, you should be able to overpower it. But I don't think that's the case in this Cy Marchetti talking to these owners of this aircraft that if you have the pitch trim all the way ran full nose up, you may not be able to humanly overpower that powerful trim system, especially at full power. Quick review of how the elevator trim system works on these light aircraft and most aircraft. This is the horizontal stabilizer. This is the elevator and this is the trim tab. On the side view, this is the horizontal stabilizer, this is the elevator, and this is the trim tab. If you want to push the nose of the aircraft down, you push the stick forward, which lowers the elevator, which lowers the nose of the aircraft. If you want to trim the nose down, you roll the trim forward, or in this case, push the switch forward, which in turn raises the elevator trim tab, which forces the elevator down, which lowers the nose of the aircraft. Same thing but opposite for up elevator if you want to trim the nose up you pull back on the switch or roll the trim back as the case may be which will in turn lower the elevator trim tab which pushes the elevator itself up thus raising the nose of the aircraft now as an a and p mechanic i can tell you it's very easy to get this backwards and wrong and you need to triple check your work with other people in the shop before you roll an aircraft out onto the flight line, especially when you're monkeying with primary flight controls like this and elevator trim tabs. You can get it so easily in your mind backwards and get yourself convinced that you got it right when it's exactly 180 degrees opposite or wrong that you need to have your work double checked. As pilots, we need to double, triple check the mechanics work anytime our aircraft rolls out of annual inspection, especially if the elevator trim system has been worked on. So I hope this gives you a better idea of one of the other things investigators are going to need to be investigating in the loss of Dale Snodgrass in the Cy Marchetti 1019 in Lewiston, Idaho. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially over on Patreon that makes this content possible. See you here.